Welcome to Junk Journal Snacks. So we have something new here. Actually, it's not something new. Actually, it's something pretty old. I found this a few years ago at my Goodwill. And I started creating a few pages, not many at all. And I found some art in here that I could recycle. So today is about recycling your old art. Now, I would not tear up an old journal definitely not but i don't consider this a journal this is just a book that i've just created a few pages in i have no attachment to this whatsoever i don't particularly love this page that was made in october 2016. then there's this one here <laughs> i no comments on that one this one is quite okay. November 2016, it's fine. And there's another one. Yeah, there's this one. For 2016, it was fine. <laughs> and this one is maybe my favorite out of all the four. Same year. And the rest is empty. So maybe you have some journals or some some books of some sort like this where you only created a few pages. You don't know what to do with the rest. You're pretty sure you're never going to use the rest. So maybe you can use some of your original art and repurpose that in a new journal. Give it a new life. Or if you find some pages that you like from your old journals that you don't want to destroy, obviously you can just take a photo and print that. I'm going to reuse this here and I actually love this back side, not the front, but this back side. So I'm going to tear this out and I want to tear this and I want to see if I can make just a low key, happy summary page in Nadja's junk journal using this as part of a background. So here she is in all her glory. It was funny, Honey was at my place when she visited for the Art Journal Festival and uh, she looked at this journal briefly and she had this in her hand and she was like, wow, on video you don't even realize what a brick this thing is. <laughs> yep, I can imagine it doesn't really come through that way on the camera. So I've already picked out a page, I think. Um, yeah, I'm happy to go over this here. So let me find something to prop this up with because it is super hard to work in like this. Most of my pages here are themed with my favorite colors like this goldeny yellow and a pale blue like the speckled egg from Ranger. But I'm happy to break that up on a few pages, not too many. So this is one of those pages. <laughs> And uh, I don't want this face here, so I want to try to tear around this a little bit. And I'm really not sad about messing this one up. <laughs> not in the least. <laughs> that would be ideal to make a pocket as well. So I'm just going to glue this on and I think that's a fabulous starting point for a background. So I'm going to use the last bits of my tacky glue. It doesn't want to come out. So now I'm thinking, is that a sign? Should I change my mind and make it into a pocket? I'm going to do that. Usually I would have put a pocket like this on that side, but I don't know, it's kind of harder to work on this side. <laughs> And something I have quite a few of and don't use enough are napkins. So I have this one here and I thought maybe we can make that work on this page. So let me just get rid of the two unnecessary plies. I think Honey uses these white plies for jelly plate printing, which is a great idea. I will save that for those. Okay, so how do we do this? A dragonfly would obviously be fabulous to have on there. 
and I kind of want the design to go over the pocket. So what I think I'm going to do is to... Oh, I need a brush and some water. So I'll take my brush and I want to tear along here. And then I'm going to roughly outline this flower and the dragonfly as well. And then I will tear along that. So then I will also go around here where the pocket is because this part needs to be on this background. And same thing for part of the dragonfly. Oh no, I tore a part of its wing. Okay, maybe we can somehow paint over that. First thing is to glue this on this background and hopefully then we will see more of the background. I'm going to do that with my matte medium. And then I'll add some on top from the middle going outward in the hope that I won't tear the napkin. And I want to make sure my pocket doesn't close. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. But actually, maybe it would be a good idea to attach these as well. What do you think? So I'm going to try to fix this poor dragonfly's wing. I'm going to start with this Spring Green by Carandash. It's a water-soluble wax pastel. And I'm going to take some of the color with my paintbrush because I don't think I can be that detailed with this kind of tip. Too faint a color, but I do like the neon effect. So let's add that to the other wings as well. Oh, that pops beautifully. That looks much cooler already. Then I want to add some of this denim blue to the tips of the wings and maybe the body as well. I don't know if I mentioned it, I did dry this in between. <laughs> and I'd like to make this whole image pop a bit more. So I want to use my neon colors. This is Reflex Rose. It's an acrylic ink and it's really this like neon pink. Look at this. <laughs> I should have put a disclaimer on the screen. <laughs> Beware bright colors. <laughs> Just going to dip in here directly and try to paint some of these. These are quite transparent so we will see the color underneath. It will make the whole thing a bit more vibrant, I hope. Plus, I think it's really fun to do this because it's very relaxing and low pressure because you already have the image there. Someone has already done that work for you and all you need to do is go over it. It's super relaxing. Next, I'm going to take my Reflex Orange. Just try to get a little bit of color variation in here. And lastly, some of my Azo Yellow Lemon. Let's see how they mix. Oh, I think that one needs to be shaken up a bit. I'm just thinking maybe it's not a smart idea to dip my brush directly in this because maybe I'll contaminate it and I don't want to do that. So I'd say that made that a lot more lively. I have dried it in the meantime. And I also want to add the pops of color to these as well. I just love how these colors pop. Makes the whole image so much more lively.
So let's compare this changed image to the original image. Wow, quite a difference, huh? It was like someone dipped these flowers in paint and put them here. <laughs> Next, I want to take a black ballpoint pen and outline some of these petals just to give them a little bit more definition. I think a ballpoint pen works really well for this. I've ruined so many black fine liners like the microchrome pens and everything that I'm over that. <laughs> Whenever you add medium or acrylic paint or wax pastels or anything like that, the fine line liners tend to go on strike and they just stop working. I don't know, sometimes you can clean the tip, but it doesn't always work and it's very annoying. And our little dragonfly as well. I'm really liking these bright colors here. This page I think will really stand out in this journal. And I'm looking again at my art that I want to recycle. And I'm looking at the, actually the front side. And I see this here, which can definitely be repurposed. And I'm thinking I should also add some really bright colors to these numbers. These are stenciled with one of the Tim Holtz stamps. And then I could use my butterfly punch and use that and we could add the butterfly here. So I'm hoping I colored enough to cover this butterfly shape. Again, this is the Sizzix die called Essential Shapes, which came with my Sizzix fold away. It's the number 662220. So cut this out and take this to my machine. So that came out pretty good. <laughs> And I'm going to ink up the edges with ground espresso. I want those really dark so that they are really defined. And next I want to try something that I've seen one of the makers from Tim Holtz do on a card. I mean, I didn't see her do it, but I saw the end result. And she used wire for the feelers of the butterfly. So how cool is that? Tell me. <laughs> That's so awesome. Unfortunately, don't remember the name of the maker, which is a bit annoying because I always want to give credit. I have no idea how she's done that, but I'm just going to make them a bit wonky. And maybe we'll make a loop on the bottom just so that it will be easier to glue so that I have a little more surface. And then on the top, we want to make a little loop for where, you know, where the feeler gets thicker. So let's try that. I want this to be oval, which is not so easy. Maybe it'll just have to stay around. Put in some effort, Barbara, come on. Okay. okay, so I just added a piece of clear tape on the back and I crossed them over. I always feel that the antennas look better when you cross them. And this is what it looks like from the front. How cool is that? I love it. What a great idea. And now we need to see how can we add this. I feel like it has to be farther down because it's a lot big, bigger than the dragonfly. <laughs> so it needs to be visually closer to us. Maybe just right down here. And I have the feeling it's not outlined enough it's not really popping from this page, so I'm going to add my black woody pencil on the edges and hopefully that will help. And I'm going to add some water to that. Yeah, that makes it come out even more. So these woody pencils are actually, I think, for kids. They're awesome and they are water soluble. So that kind of grunges the whole thing up a bit, which is always good. I still think it could pop off the page a little more. Let's try adding a book page underneath. So I'm going to glue that on. And then I'm going to 
hair around this. That definitely pops more, but it's a bit too wide for my taste. There, that's better. And I'm ready to glue this on. I also think this needs a quote here. I took out my nature quotes. You can find these linked below. And there's two here that I like specifically for this page. One is everything in nature invites us constantly to be what we are. And the other is all my life through the new sights of nature made me rejoice like a child from Marie Curie. And I think I like this one because this is kind of like child's play, right? And the colors are so bright. It, it kind of has this feeling of a child has done this, which is not a bad thing. I will ink this with my ground espresso and I want to add some more texture and interest by just adding a little bit of this sewing thread or maybe instead of bunching it up oh too late it's bunched up <laughs> I want to just kind of wrap it in an oval yeah I guess I can still do that yeah I also want to add a little bit more like washed out color in the background here. So I'm going to take my neon pink and neon orange and try to dilute that. Let's see what that looks like. So now I feel like the pocket and the background, they blend in together a little bit better. And while I was looking through those old journals, <laughs> I found this. And this is something I have obviously made in the life book course in 2015. So seven years ago. And just to compare, this is my current or, you know, a journal that I made very recently. <laughs> it just makes me laugh how I'm going back to my roots. I love both. I love vintage and I guess sometimes I just need the bright colors, maybe especially in summer. I, I don't know that yet. This has not had a proper home until now. So this will go in here. And actually, I would like to write something on the back. So I just added here going back to the roots and using fun neon colors, just like I did seven years ago. How fun. I will keep loving neutrals and vintage and grungy, but sometimes you just need a pop of color. So this can finally have a home in here. <laughs> it's actually the next day. And when I was editing this video, I noticed one thing was really missing and that's white splatters. So let me just add those. <laughs> It's really amazing how you see things differently through the lens. Those turned out a bit bigger than I intended, but okay. <laughs> so go ahead, recycle some art. It's so much fun. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah. <laughs>